check. Yep, so it's, this time it's recording from the, the right source. And what I will do is, first of all, you know, I do not teach out of D2L, I teach out of Moodle, okay? Um, if you have used Moodle before at least a year ago, um, we have changed the URL because Moodle is now officially inside the district. So instead of you know we be operating you know independently, we are now a part of the district. So this is the URL to the website. It's m o o d l e moodle dot <coughs> And unfortunately, that part of the screen is out, and I cannot even get there. Um, yes, but to get to the syllabus, you have to go to the website, so we have a little bit of a chicken and egg problem here. And obviously, I have a different issue because I can't even get to get to the internet. Um, okay, it's not getting... Can you guys get there? Your hand? Okay. No wireless network, that's fine. But what about wired network? Uh, hey. Yeah, I accidentally sent it off. I didn't have the code, but thank you. All right, we don't have, the, couldn't get to the neck. Thank you. Okay. I'm gonna put that sign outside the door too, just in case. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. That is not good. So the website that we have to go to, let me uh, use a text editor so I can show you exactly where, uh, what the URL is. This is all gonna be recorded and pushed onto YouTube so you can find it. Um, the URL is moodle.losrios.edu. So if you, if you have never been there before, you might want to write it down because you know, that's the, the place to go. Um, you, if you already have used you know, this particular resource already, you know, obviously you know how to get there. Um, the last email that I sent you um, was also relayed through Moodle. So if you click anything on that you know, email, you can actually go to Moodle too. So there are several ways to get back onto the server. 
All right, so let me go back to the website here. Um, when you log in, you cannot log in using your last name and first name. You have to log in using your student ID starting with a W. So this time you do have to start with a W um, and then followed by the seven digits of your student ID. Okay. The password, your password will be the same password as IML, D2L, eSurfaces, and everything else that you do you know, in the district. So it's the single sign-in password that you have been using for um, all the resources in Los Rios. Is that okay? And I think I added everyone you know, to Moodle already. So even if you're on the wait list, you should be able to log in to Moodle at this point. So if you guys want to do it, you know, go ahead and you know, give it a try. You know, sign in to Moodle and um, see if you can access it. The front page of the CIS website you know, already has a link to the Moodle website. So you don't even have to type in the URL. All right. So let's just say that you can log in. <clears throat> the first thing you will see after you log in will be you know, something like this. Um, you will see under my courses, you know, your, the courses listed under your courses will not be you know, this many, but you should be able to find CISW370, designing, web access, designing Accessible Websites, to be one of those items. Is that okay so far? Okay. So if you find it, you know, just go ahead and click it. If you do not find it, if you log in, but this item does not appear, then something is wrong, you know, either you're not even on the wait list because I couldn't add you to the system or um, something else is going on. Yep. Yeah, I can't log into it. You could not log in? Are you in the class or are you on the wait list? I was number four on the wait list. You're number four on the wait list. Last time I checked, the wait, wait list only had three people. <laughs> so maybe that's why. I'll, I'll double check on that. Um, but if you can see this item, you know, just go ahead and click it. And that will bring you to the website. Um, you will see something similar to what I'm seeing here, but not exactly the same, because you'll be looking at it from the student's perspective and not from the professor's perspective. But it will be something like this. Are we still doing OK? Except you know, for, you know, cannot sign in at this point. All right. So you can see that the uh, syllabus is listed here. So the syllabus in HTML format and also the syllabus in PDF format are both here. If you want to print it out, you know, and so you can put it in a binder, uh, you probably would want to go for the PDF version and then just print it out. Uh, if you just want to browse it, you know, just look, it, look up certain things, you know, the HTML version will be just fine. Are there any questions at this point? Your questions? All right. So I'll just go ahead and you know, go over the syllabus because you know that really describes everything um, that you should know about this class, and me, you know, and also you know, other things that you should know. Um, course information: um, the title, you know, you should know this already, is designing accessible websites. How many people are actually actively developing a website or revising a website? All right, very good. And how many people think that you'll be doing that, you know, relatively soon? Okay. So that's why you guys are here. All right. Description. This course provides an overview of the methods that are used to design websites for people with disabilities, current legal requirements for accessible websites, especially the American with Disabilities Act, ADA, are emphasized. So we'll be going over you know, a lot of you know, documents. Um, I'll be focusing on mostly just the website part, because the ADA actually includes a lot of other parts too, but this class focuses on just web access. <clears throat> Stu student learning objectives. Now this part is interesting um, because uh, we have, how many people understand what is SLO, student learning objectives, or student learning outcome? Okay, what, what do you think it is? Oh, uh, what, we're, so what we should know by the end of the class. Exactly, all right, very good. So basically it describes, you know, by the time we finish this class, you know, in about eight weeks, you should be able to, and then all of these things, you know, are the things that you should be able to do. Describe the current legal requirements for designing websites for people with disabilities. Compare various tools for the assessment of accessibility of web pages. Formulate coding strategies for generating accessible websites. 
access the accessibility, assess, sorry, assess the accessibility levels of various types of websites, locate dis disability and web accessibility resources, test specialized browsers and other internet software for people with disabilities. This is a one unit class. We're only meeting, you know, 18 lecture hours. Uh, but since this is a fully online class, after today, until, unless you come to my office hour, you will probably not see me again, you know, for the purpose of this class. Any questions about this page? Any questions? Okay. Do you guys see the student learning objectives from the catalog? No. I was told that this is now on the online version of the catalog. So, you know, if you look up the online catalog, you should be able to see that too. Um, my name is Tech, first name is Tech, last name is almost unpronounceable. Um, it's all young, you know, it doesn't look like all young, you know, it's just you know, like five vowels, you know, kind of strung together. It's followed by one single consonant at the end, you know, that makes it kind of hard to pronounce. My office is number seven in Liberal Arts 133. Um, does everybody know, does everybody know where to find uh, Liberal Arts 133? Okay, it's one aisle over on the other side. Uh, it has a glass door that says um, either BCS or CIS. BCS stands for Business and Computer Science. It's a division office. My office is number seven inside that particular office room. My office hours are from. 9 to 10 o'clock on Mondays and Wednesdays. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I work you know, at night uh, from 6 to 7 o'clock. On Fridays, it's online from 9 to 10 o'clock. Um, I have a phone number, but the best way to contact me is either to go through my personal email address or my school address. In either case, you want to put the class you know, CISW370 in the subject line so I know, you know, what, the, you know class, what the email is about. <clears throat> and the on, quote unquote online classroom is Moodle. Any questions about this page? Okay. Moving on. Uh, this is specific to this section. You know, I got this wrong because I was copy and pasting from another class. This is a fully online class, so we don't have any meetings other than, you know, today, which is the orientation. Class policies and rules. Um, a lot of this stuff. Okay, let me go back. Acceptable excuses. Um, since we are not meeting face to face, I'm not going to take a role, you know, in as in a conventional class. But if you have, you know, any one of these three reasons, and you cannot, you know, complete your homework or cannot participate in a quiz or stuff like that, let me know and you know provide, you know, a proof, uh, some kind of proof that you're either sick or you have jury duty or you have military duty and I am required to accept those excuses and give you extra time. For attendance, this is interesting because, because how do I you know, check attendance for an online class? We're not meeting in the classroom. So any suggestions, any th any, are there any ideas? Exactly, logging in. So if someone does not log in for a long period of time, that counts as absence. Okay, and I'll be sure to give you enough homework assignments so you have excuses to log in and go like, oh, okay, I need to check and see if there's any homework. I need to turn in something. You know, so you have enough excuses to log in. 